Burnt Horizon. Discless Consoles. Vox Freaking Machina. All on Geek This Week. Hello everybody, I'm Max. And I'm X. And we got a lot of data cubes in mind, so let's just jump right on into it. Apparently, Ubisoft's Rainbow Six Siege is still going strong. In fact, this last week actually featured another season. The season, titled Burnt Horizon, takes players to the land down under, featuring two new Australian operators, Gridlock and Mozzie, and a new map on a service station in the Australian Outback. Gridlock's ability allows her to deploy a portable web of spikes that covers a large hexagonal area, while Mozzie's allows him to hack and take over enemy drones to get a better scope of the environment. Rainbow Six Siege seasons don't seem to be stopping anytime soon, so which nation will be featured next is anyone's guess. Following rumors in the Pokemon Direct, we did receive Generation 8. Pokemon Sword and Shield will be bringing the 8th generation of lovable creatures to life in this brand new region of Galar. The three new starters are Grookey, who seems to be able to make plants grow back, Scorbunny, a high-jumping soccer bunny with fiery speed, and Sobble, who appears to become invisible, at least in water, and has the surprised Pikachu face. Yes! The game will be in 3D, of course, and it looks absolutely stunning. The new location appears to have all sorts of environments, from large cities to snow-covered mountains, reminiscent of the UK. After a very long three years since Generation 7, it's nice to be finally seeing Pokemon, and on the Switch, no less. Overwatch's new hero is here, Baptiste, a combat medic that is a self-proclaimed hero here to make the world a better place. He claims to fight to make the world a better place, giving some advantage and others a bullet. The native Haitian was orphaned during the Omnic Crisis and ended up joining the military group Caribbean Coalition. Bati struggled to settle down and ended up being recruited by Talon, the mercenary group led by the Overwatch villains Reaper and Doomfist. He has since left Talon. This is Overwatch's first new support character since Brigitte almost a year ago. Baptiste is a buff-oriented support with a lot of gadgets to help his team control the game. His primary fire is his medic SMG giving off a three-round burst. His alternate is a biotic launcher, shooting projectiles that heal allies near the impact. His passive ability, Exo Boots, allows Baptiste to crouch to charge a boost and then propel himself upward. He has two abilities, in which he activates a Heal Over Time Bubble and Immortality Field, where he generates a field within which allies cannot be reduced below 20% health. On release, it will last for 8 seconds. Baptiste's ultimate is an Amplification Matrix, which doubles both damage and healing when anything passes through it. Microsoft has announced a new digital-only Xbox One, even though there's been controversy surrounding the whole darn system. This Xbox One S All Digital Edition, more commonly referred to as the Xbox One Maverick, will have no disk drive and will therefore only be able to play digital versions of games. This development doesn't come as a huge surprise as Microsoft has been heavily pushing services like their Xbox Games Pass, and let's not forget that this is essentially how they intended the Xbox One to function in the first place. The console is estimated to release sometime in May with pre-orders starting a few weeks prior. This marks the first console of its kind, and let's really hope this doesn't start a trend, please no. Due to recent developments, I'm looking at you Apex, Fortnite has been losing a little traction lately. So they've been stepping it up in hopes of turning things around. Their newest season, Season 8, will feature some really interesting new updates. Like usual, it will feature some new player skins as well as some tweaks to the terrain, but more importantly, it will be featuring an entire island dedicated to the band Weezer. That's right, apparently Epic Games has partnered with Weezer in order to promote two self-titled albums, distinguished by their color, the Teal Album and the Black Album. So if you decide to play in creative mode and are feeling up for some Weezer tunes, why not take a stroll over to Weezer Island? A 400-year-old Japanese temple is modernizing by having an android give Buddhist sermons. The robot Kanan, that cost roughly $900,000, was created in collaboration between Kyoto's Kadaiji Temple and Hiroshi Ishiguro, a robotics professor from Osaka University. Kanan's first sermon was provided on February 23rd, and it is able to provide sermons in English, Chinese, and of course Japanese. It would be weird if the Japanese robot didn't know Japanese. Tensho Goto, a priest at the temple in Kyoto's Higashiyama ward, says, We are hoping that the android canon will help Buddhist teachings reach the heart of the people today. If you'd like to make the trip, the AI preacher is preaching at Kyoto's Kodaiji temple from March 8th to May 6th. It's that time of year again. A new year for Blizzard's Hearthstone, where all your favorite cards leave competitive matchmaking. The Year of the Dragon is coming in 2019, and it's bringing in some interesting changes. 
Instead of having a free single player expansion, the players will get to play the first adventure for free. And then after that, they can unlock the next chapters by paying 700 gold or unlocking the entire experience for $20. Each chapter of the single player story will come with two additional characters to play, each with three hero powers and four starting decks to unlock, all of which will be usable against the dozens of new bosses scattered across the multiple new game modes. After completing each chapter, the player will be rewarded with three card packs from the expansion. And after finishing the entire campaign, players unlock a card pack and a complete golden classic pack. This expansion will help players learn the new systems and mechanics that are bound to be used in creative and interesting ways, as is the staple of this successful mobile card game. Details about the cards coming in and going out will be linked below. This week in movies and television, and apparently Kickstarter history, tabletop RPG fans all around the world have come to fund Critical Role's animated series. And it's like six times what they are expecting. The project was started in an attempt to raise enough funds to make a professionally animated short featuring the characters from their first Dungeons & Dragons campaign, Vox Machina. The original goal was to raise $750,000 within about a month and a half. But it seems the cast vastly underestimated the passion their fan base had for such a product. In record-shattering fashion, fans blew the original goal out of the water and have raised over six million dollars in less than a week. With so much extra funding, the original 22-minute episode has grown into a six-episode miniseries featuring the Briarwood arc, and there's still another month left on the Kickstarter. This series is meant to showcase the events the party underwent prior to the first episode of the campaign, which will act as a perfect prologue for anyone looking to get into the series. It just goes to show you what thousands of passionate individuals can actually accomplish. Though there isn't much to say about it yet, the new Lord of the Rings series being produced by Amazon has a setting now. The series will take place in the Second Age, the age preceding the trilogy of movies produced by Peter Jackson. This is the time period in which the rings were first forged and corrupted by Sauron. It is also the time before Numenor, the island known to be the greatest civilization of men. It's not much to go on, but it renewed our excitement for the series. Las Vegas is about to get boring. That is, Las Vegas is going to be building a people mover at the Las Vegas Convention Center, and they appear to be going through Elon Musk's boring company. The project is suspected to be finished by January 2021, just in time for the Consumer Electronics Show, so they don't have a lot of time to waste before they get started. The project is going to be relatively small, only considering the convention center itself, rather than transporting passengers to and from the airport or center of town. The Boring Company assures that they can expand the tunnel system post-construction, though, so there's always room for expansion. No designs will be finalized until after March 12th, when the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority meet. The Boring Company stands out relative to other companies that build mass transits because they are significantly cheaper and far less disruptive to the surrounding area, as the entire construction is underground. Given Vegas' taste for more modern transportation, robot taxis and self-driving shuttles included, it's really not surprising they are electing to go with this more efficient mass transit method. In other news surrounding Elon Musk, SpaceX's Crew Dragon's first dock was a success. The historic flight of the Crew Dragon began with its successful docking with the International Space Station. After making 18 orbits around the Earth, it then docked autonomously with the ISS Harmony module. After its dock, the crew aboard the ISS welcomed the unlikely passenger, test dummy astronaut Ripley, to show that the flight could have been made by humans safely. Though the spacecraft is designed to stay docked with the ISS for up to 210 days, the craft only remained for five, departing on Friday, March 8th. The Crew Dragon has since landed back on Earth, precisely on time too, and has been pulled out of the water. The ship is currently being prepared for its next launch with a live crew coming this summer. That's absolutely wild. That'll be the first manned US spacecraft to launch from here, in like, over 20 years. Space! Space! I wanna space. go to space. 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 I wanna be in space. Dad, can I be in space? Dad, can we be in space? Dad, are you space? space? <laughs> Both immediately start channeling the space. Well, obviously. <clears throat> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let us know down below what your favorite piece of news was. And with that, we'll catch you geeks next, next week. week. Instead of having a fringle, a fringle flare, a flaffin. Yeehaw!
Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. Dun 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 dragons. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons and Gungans. Ha 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 ha. This week in movies intelligent. Uh, intelligent. What the fuck? Did I just say? Brother, brother, mother said it was my turn to use the telegin. To use the telegin. <laughs> <coughs>